The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science: storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen to empower your children. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is hi. I'm Rob. I work in a school just outside of Milton Keynes, and I've taught every year group from reception up to year six. And I'm Nicola, and I teach a junior school in Hampshire. And at the moment, I teach year six children. I have also worked at Teacher Training College, and hopefully, enthuse students to be fantastic educators themselves. And today, we are exploring what science we can teach with a folk tale from the Indian jungle. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for the real king of the jungle. There, you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as a paperback, joyously illustrated by Winnie the Witch's Corky Paul, as well as the full audio book for you to download at any time. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Rob and Nicola Tenderway and Loris and all the other animals. In fact, this is a story that's abundant in science. It must be because it's got so many animals in there.、Uh, Rob, you were nodding along with that,、yeah. so I'm going to ask you to start with <laughs> ages four to seven. We'll start at the lower end of the school today. What、uh, is the science you've picked out from this tale? I picked out a couple of ideas, and then one which kind of overarches. Over both of them. Oh, okay. So the first idea is just exploring a habitat.、Mm. The habitat that they live in is the jungle, and I would probably do this with year one, year two. How do we know that they live in the jungle? So kind of a bit of thinking about them.、Mm. How do we, like for example, how do we know that they don't live in the sea? So identifying the features that say these are、I、animals、see. that live in the jungle,、mm. and then looking at the kind of trees that you might find in a jungle. The kind of plants, because it talks about how what kind of their trees are like with all the fruits going mouldy and the flies、mm-hmm. everywhere, and then I would kind of almost link it into the geography idea that I'm going to talk about later on in the week, but I'm、mm. not going to mention it now because I'm going to save that for <laughs> geography. <laughs> Another teaser to bring people back <laughs> next week. <laughs> yeah, I would also start to think about past the year two curriculum is looking at food chains,、mm. so. Exploring what a food chain is, and getting the children to、uh, look at the food chains that occur in the story, and then potentially extending them as well. So, kind of pause the story and say, "Okay, the elephant was eaten by the leopard, but what would the elephant eat?" To、so、start、mm. off with, not just the food chains that's in the story, but outside it as well. Yeah, looking at your apex predators and. Uh, your producers and all kinds of things like that. So that would be a good couple of lessons on that. And then my overarching bit was just researching the different animals、mm-hmm. because there are going to be animals in here that, depending on your class, they may not be familiar with, or they they may have seen them but they might have not have known what the name is. Yeah. So I would get some、uh, purposeful science writing out of this, I think, and say, okay, well, let's create a facts file about. One of the animals. Let's do some research on a loris. What is a loris? What are its、mm. features? How big is it? Things like that. So just really kind of exploring the different animals that are mentioned in the story as well. Lovely. I've got similar ideas, but obviously for the old, older children. So again, with Rob,、mm. I totally agree. Food chains. I mean, it comes up a lot in the story anyway, and using that as a as a starting point. I think with the older age range, they could actually look at the actual text and take things from the text and actually do the food chains from what what is written. My Main idea was a bit like your overarching theme, Rob. The idea of of looking at the animals and thinking of their different.、Um, 
well, using the story, actually, thinking of the qualities they had in the story, um, maybe thinking about their weight, maybe thinking about the food they eat, and producing trump cards. Hmm. So basically, ultimately, the children play a game of trump, but from the animals in the actual story. There's so many, so much information in the story as well. So they could abstract the information from the story, put it on the trump cards, give them a number. So if they are very brave, maybe in the story, that animal has a higher brave score. Yeah. and, And play trumps. I've done that sort of activity before, but this story really would bring it out fantastically. And uh, and children really get into it. And, and you can then photocopy the trump cards. So the children have got a set. They can play them at home. They can play them in school. And it's, it's great oh, fun. Brilliant. Yeah. And of course, that's bringing in loads of other learning outcomes from other subjects, isn't it? Your Absolutely. English and your art. And yeah, Definitely. excellent. Yeah, they're retrieving a lot of information from the text and and, and understanding the characters. It, it could bring in, like we said, PSHG, the characters' reactions. Mm. Evilness score, maybe. <laughs> there could be an oh. evilness score. And, and we know our, our main character certainly mm. is going to get a very high score for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, two other themes that came through, but more at the end of the story, was the idea of light and sound. So the idea of reflection in the water and how um, you could certainly bring in reflection into, um, course, into the learning yeah there as well as sound and echoes and how does sound travel Mm. so they're more themes than activities but they are ways into those particular areas and actually they're not easy ones to bring a thing so it's wonderful to have a story that brings those in because i can't think of any other story that covers both those aspects as well as this one probably would do yeah and you you could even pause the story at the point where tenderway is looking down at his reflection in order to um, help the children to understand why that is happening and actually let them see their reflection in some water for example so that they are able to really pick that up yeah definitely just want to to throw an idea in here myself and and i don't know which end of the school this might be explored but would it be particularly scientific to start talking about the difference it would make taking one animal out of the food chain here or the differences that Tendaway is making by being too uh, greedy with his diet with his predations Uh, i'm thinking of how you know it's mentioned in the story that by eating so much this has led to um, the jungle being swarmed by many more bugs but it's also led to things getting overgrown if you were to change the story somewhat and decide to have a, a really greedy elephant in there suddenly you'll find yourself with no leaves on the trees and so all of the trees are going to die if you have a really greedy red panda you're going to have no bugs and therefore there's no pollination so again you know you're not going to get the trees and i was just wondering whether that would be something either of you could uh, explore definitely yeah yeah i think you would throw it in as a question for the the key stage one the younger children and just get them to talk a bit about it but hmm. i think definitely with your older children you could do more of a, an investigation or spend more time thinking about it. I had this mm. vision of um, like an acting situation where different children are those things. And you, 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 if you take one out, what happens to the other things? They actually physically become the grasses or the animals and they can then show physically how that, how that changes to, to experience it themselves, to hopefully remember and, uh-huh. and understand those differences. I've certainly found when I've talked about pollination before, for example, children pretending to be the flower, have done pollination dances, pretending to be a flower and the bee comes along and what happens to the flower is a really <laughs> memorable way of learning. And I think if they were those animals in the jungle, and then we added another animal into the mix and then saw the interactions between them. I, I don't know. It, it might be more teacher-led, pe- teacher talking, but it might help them to understand those interactions and how the food chain may be affected and the habitat is affected by the various changes in the story. Yeah, well, we know that contrary to popular opinion, teacher-led learning is the way that comes out on top when it's uh, compared with student-led and activity-led. But that's one of the reasons why I think storytelling beats every other method, hands down, because it's kind of a a combination of teacher-led and student focused because it's inside the heads of your listeners or all of the activity and the action is taking place inside the heads of your listeners while you as the teacher are leading them guiding them on that journey so um yeah it's, it could be a a wonderful way to have some thought experiments and i i mean i i suppose one option which would maybe combine this with a bit of literacy would 
be inviting them to rewrite the story, but with a different animal mm. um, as the greedy one to see how their jungle setting would then be altered by the impact of the extra greedy elephant or the extra greedy bison or whatever. Is that an idea? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, you, you explained it so well, we didn't need to add anything. <laughs> we were stunned. I don't know. I was, I was sitting here panicking, thinking, oh, no, they, they really don't like that one. <laughs> no, we do. <laughs> o- on this subject, though, I feel that I have to put in here some of the research on the loris that Helen did for us, because she, she discovered that the loris is, uh, it, it has poisonous armpits. Huh. And its defense mechanism is to <laughs> basically lick its own armpits and then bite it, <laughs> its, its attackers. Like a superpower. Yeah, it's, it's a really interesting superpower. <laughs> <laughs> and so did this come up in like PSHE and looking after yourself and... Hygiene. Yeah, hygiene. Oh, definitely yeah. could have been a PSHE <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> That's sadly all we have time for in this episode, folks, and indeed this week. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you are soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favourite podcast app. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable and enjoyable all at the same time. We'll be back next week so the animals of the Indian jungle can help us plan lessons in history, geography, religious education, design and technology, art, music and physical education. I really should have taken a deeper breath. Right now, though, it only remains for us to say cheerio and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio! And we hope to hear your story soon! soon.